Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Almighty Zentaco. Um, I would just like to apologize for missing last week's video. I've been laid out with a pretty bad flu, and as you can probably hear, I still sound a little funny. That being said, I prefer not to miss another video, so we're going to do this anyway, even though I'm not feeling that great. This is going to be a quick video on how to set up some key bindings with the keyboard using the Control X object. So, Go ahead and set up your frame like so. It's a little complicated, so um, you know, pay attention. First, you're gonna need the Control X object. Then you're gonna need the Platform Movement object. At least for this example, because we are going to be making a simple little platformer to test out our key bindings. Then you're gonna need an active object, which I have called bindings. And all this is is an object that is going to hold our binding information. So we're gonna need to give this thing some alterable values. <laughs> Go ahead and give it a new one. We're going to call this um, bind underscore index. And that's just going to be a variable we use for our, um, our binding loop. Not really a loop, our binding algorithm. Anyway, we're going to need some strings to actually store the values of uh, our key presses into. We could also use alterable values, but I would prefer to use the string so that when we use, um, so when we store this information, we can load it as a string into our edit boxes and the player will be able to read it. Instead of it being a number, it'll be text. Like instead of like 38 or something, it'll say left. I actually don't know if 38 is left, but it, it is a number. And we want to make sure this is as readable as possible for our users. So we'll make alterable string A um, right, alterable string B will be left, and alterable string C will be jump. So that's all we're going to set is right, left, and jump. I do have a string object here. I was using this to debug. You don't necessarily need it. You might want to put it there. It's up to you. OK, so we have an active object here on the top right. This is all it is. It's an active object that's a button, and it says bind key. This is the button we're going to press to initiate key binding. OK, so we have three other active objects. Um, these are simply art, really. They don't hold any values or anything. Um, they have two frames of animation, but the animation speed is zero because we do not want these to animate. We want it to stay on the first frame until we actively set it to the second. And all this is, it's a little thing that indicates what it is you are binding. So for example, this one would be you are binding the right key, and uh, this would be unselected, and this is selected. So this lets us know which key is currently active in uh, our binding algorithm. So we have one for left as well, and one for jump. So you'd probably want to make these for each of yours, no matter how many keys you are binding. And then we have these edit boxes. So each one of these edit boxes is just going to display the current value of um, the current value of that key. For, so the right key, which the current the value of the keys, we're going to be grabbing them from. Like I said, we're going to store it into the bindings object, and we're going to use right, left, and jump. Let's go ahead and insert a group of events. We're going to call this platformer. And this is just going to be our code that runs this little platformer. You should know how to do this. I have made multiple tutorials about platformers. So start a frame, we need to set the object. Going to set it to our player. We need to do a collision testing event. Find out if the player is overlapping a backdrop. If that is so, then he does overlap with an obstacle. Okay, so now we're gonna actually do the uh, inputs. So we're gonna use the control X object for this. We're gonna say, go under the control X object and look for keyboard. And we wanna know, uh, actually repeat while key is pressed. And we wanna grab the value for this key. We're gonna go to our bindings object and we're gonna grab the uh, alterable string and we're gonna retrieve right. Okay, so that means while uh, the button that is the value of that right value in the bindings, whenever that's being held down, that is when we are going to select users holding right input key. Okay, now we're going to do another one for left. We'll go back to the control X. And we will say 
keyboard, repeat while key is pressed. And for this, we're gonna grab the string value of left from that bindings object. And for jump, we want to go say alterable value. No, no, we want to say key pressed. <clears throat> and that key is going to be the value of that jump. Now we wanna let them hold jump in air, so we will say keyboard repeat while key is pressed. And that's gonna be the same value as well. Grab the value of jump. And so for this one, we are saying jump. And for this other one, the last one, user is holding jump in the air. Okay, so currently these values are all null, so this is not gonna do anything. Let's go ahead and ins insert another group of events, and this is going to be bind keys. Okay, to initiate the key binding, we simply want to find out if the player has clicked on the bind keys button. So we go to the keyboard mouse object. Mouse uh, user clicks on an object, and that object is the button here. So when that happens, what we're going to do is change our index, our uh, bind index from 0, which is where it's at currently, to 1. And that's what's going to get the ball rolling. So go to alterable values, set bind index to 1. Now we are also going to always want, um, like I said, these, these uh, edit boxes are going to need to reflect the values for right, left, and jump that are currently stored. So let's make that an always event, put it right here. And we will say, uh, edit box one, we are going to go to editing, set text. We are going to set the text to the value of the string under bindings, under the binding object of uh, the string right. And the second one, we're gonna make it be left. We're gonna drag it over though. It's a little, a little faster just to drag these over and edit them. So we'll edit the second one, and we want this to be the value of left, not right. Alt string left. And the third one, we want it to be the value of jump. So go ahead and plug in all those values. So now this will reflect what is currently stored uh, into the object as our current binding, as a some text for us, uh, for our players to look at. That way they know what's going on. Otherwise, they'll be very confused. Okay, let's throw in another always event. And uh, what we're gonna do here is always set the animation frame, frame, blah, not the fringe. We are always going to set these animation frames of these buttons to uh, the first frame. And we're doing that to essentially clear out all of them. And then depending on what the bind index is, then we're going to activate the proper button. Hopefully that makes sense. Animation, change, um, animation frame, and we're gonna make them all zero, which is the first frame. Okay, so here is where we're going to essentially do the binding. Okay, so we're gonna find out if the bind index of our bind object equals one, which it'll equal one whenever we have clicked on the button. Initially, otherwise it'll equal zero, okay? So that means we've just started this thing up. So if it equals one, we're gonna make sure that this right button is active. So to do that, we wanna change this animation frame to one, because that is the frame that is lit up. So that's all we're gonna do there. Now we're gonna ask again, if the alterable value of bind index equals one, we also wanna find out if a button gets pressed, the keyboard, so upon pressing any key, grab that and put that to the top though. <clears throat> um, so this means that if the bind index is one and we press something, then we're gonna get the last pressed thing and we're gonna save it into our bindings object. So upon pressing any key and the bind index equals one, so that means we've pressed the key. Now all we wanna do is set the alterable string. Um, I believe the first thing we wanna set was right. So yeah, set the alterable string. Click on the control X object, go to keyboard, get last key pressed as string. 
boom. So it's now saved into that value. We also want to add one to the bind index. Wait, did I just set it to one? No, I added. So now the bind index is going up one. Now, we don't want this, if the problem is if we continue to do this this way without having a flag, it will actually set all of the keys to the first key you press. It'll run through the entire algorithm. So we need to make sure it only does it once per game loop. And we're gonna use a flag to make sure that happens. So we're gonna add another condition here. And we're gonna find out if the flag is off, flag zero is off in our um, bindings object. So we also then want to set the flag on here. And that means that this will only happen once the flag gets set on. It will go to the end of the program, and at the very bottom of the program is when we're going to turn the flag back off, allowing us to receive new inputs next time if it flips through. I apologize if I'm coughing in this. I know I sound terrible. So let's see if we did this right. We have set right to last key press, add one to bind index, set flag on. This is exactly what we want to do, so we're going to copy this, both of these, and uh, paste them down here. And we just need to change the value of the bind index to be 2. Um, and then we want to force the animation of left to be on now. So we move that over. And we just we, we want to add this. Blah, we want to edit this here. <clears throat> We want to change the value of left to the last key pressed. And then we just copy it again. Change the animation of the jump to be on. <clears throat> this is going to be key binding number three, so change the bind index to three. And uh, edit this so that the key that is selected is going to be for jump instead of what we had selected previously. That should be mostly everything. We just want to set up an always event here at the bottom <coughs> to flip that switch back off. So go to flags, set off, flag zero. Okay, let's test our key bindings now. Press the key bind button. It now highlights right because it wants the right input. So we'll press the right arrow key. Now it wants left, we'll press left. And jump, we'll press Z. Let's test it out. Right went right, uh, left jumped. And Z did nothing. So there's a problem. I think I know exactly what it is, though. We made a mistake in our platformer code. Yep, messed up uh, what does what. We have we have this all offset. So this is user holds jump in air while we re on line 19 while we were holding in jump. And then this one was jump when we pressed the jump button. Um, so we have the right in input is correct. We don't have anything for left, so we'll have on user input, user is holding left input key. All we had done is made a mistake about, uh, we didn't line up our conditions and our expressions properly. My bad. Let's test it one more time, it should work. Bind keys, press right, left, and we'll use uh, W for jump. All right, so right moves right, left moves left, W jumps. So um, yeah, we did it. This is essentially um, how you bind keys. It's fairly straightforward. So um, this is for how to bind keys with the keyboard. You do it a little differently um, with a controller. I will probably do another tutorial on that later. So thanks guys for watching. I hope you found this tutorial useful. I apologize that I sound like garbage in this one. Uh, not feeling so great. So yeah, I'm going to try to actually kick out two tutorials this week because I missed one last week. So um, expect another one coming. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below or hop into my Discord channel and hopefully someone, me or someone else, can get you guys sorted out. So as always guys, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.